ATF is still tuned to Enterprise Homer. The instructor asks, what is the direction to the station? Due north is his answer. Wait, he is catching his error. That isn't his heading indicator. It is simply telling him the station is straight ahead of us. Okay, what is our heading to the station? 315 degrees. We're southeast of the station. Fine. 315 degrees, then, is our track to the station. A track is a straight line going toward or away from a station. Now we turn left to a heading of west. Remember, in using the ADF, don't confuse the ADF with your heading indicator. Regardless of where you are, north, east, south, or west of the station, if the ADF needle is straight up, you are headed toward the station. We've moved away from our last position. What is the direction to the station now? He's turning right until the needle reads zero to find the heading to the station. The instructor marks one up for him. That is the simplest and best method to use when you plan to go directly to the station. But there will be times when you want to know the direction to the station without having to change aircraft heading. The student has been told to see if he can determine the direction to the station on our present heading. He knows that the station is 100 degrees to the right of the nose, and to go to the station, he would have to turn right 100 degrees. This would give him a new heading of 010 degrees. Therefore, the direction to the station from this location is 010 degrees. To describe our position, we say we are on an inbound track of 010 degrees. There will be times when you will not be cleared directly to the station, but will be given a definite track to intercept and follow. Suppose we were cleared to intercept and go to the station on an inbound track of 040 degrees. The first step is to turn parallel to our desired track to determine the angular distance we are located from that track. Any time we parallel a desired track, the ADF needle will point toward the track. If the track is to the right, the needle is to the right. If the track is to the left, the needle is to the left. Notice also that the angular distance the aircraft is located from the track is equal to the angular distance the needle is deflected from the nose. Think back to high school geometry and you'll see why. Two parallel lines, alternate angles equal. In our case, we know that the desired 040 degree inbound track is 30 degrees to our left. The method we use to intercept this track is to turn toward the track double the angular distance we are from the track. In this case, we turn left 60 degrees, and the ADF needle moves right 60 degrees to a reading of 30 degrees. Since we must fly through a 30-degree change to reach our track, the ADF needle will move further away from the nose as we progress toward the track. Now we must think ahead. What will the ADF indicate when we reach our new track? Remember, we turned away from our parallel heading 60 degrees. So we will cross the new track at a 60-degree angle. He isn't quite sure. He's thinking. Will it read 60 degrees right of the nose? Sure it will. It must be deflected from the nose of the aircraft, an angle equal to the interception angle. Let's see if it checks. As he turns right 60 degrees to go toward the station, the needle will be displaced 60 degrees left to zero. We are on the 040 degree inbound track. And it will work that way with any interception angle. If you intercept at a 90 degree angle, the needle must show a 90 degree deflection when you reach the track. A 45-degree angle, the needle must show a 45-degree deflection, and so on. This also applies when intercepting an outbound track. 
except that the angle of deflection must be computed from the 180-degree position of the ADF dial. 30 degrees left of the tail, 210 degrees in this example. There are two ways of getting to the station. The tracking method and another method called homing. In homing, we point the nose of the aircraft toward the station and keep the needle on the nose. Under a no-wind situation, this would work fine. With a crosswind, the aircraft will drift off the track. If we keep changing the heading to point toward the station, we will reach the station, but it will result in a curved path over the ground. This can be very dangerous, where a definite track must be followed for aircraft separation. We will use the tracking method. This involves finding the correct drift correction for wind by bracketing so that we will maintain the desired track. The first step is to get on the desired track and on the heading of that track. Be careful to maintain the heading. Now watch the ADF needle for an indication of drift. Our needle is moving left, so our aircraft is drifting right. Now we must turn to a heading that will return us to the track. Normally 20 degrees is ample. Notice that when we turned left 20 degrees, the ADF needle changed 20 degrees, from 355 degrees to 015 degrees. As we progress toward the track, the ADF needle will be deflected further right. We will have reached our track when the ADF needle is 20 degrees right of the nose, since our heading is 20 degrees left of the track. If our 20 degree initial correction returns us to the track, then it would take us past the track if we remained on this heading. However, at this time, we take out half the initial correction, 10 degrees, by turning to a heading of 30 degrees. We now have our first trial correction. The ADF indicates 10 degrees right of the nose. The heading is 10 degrees left of the track. We are on track. If the ADF stays at 10 degrees, then our first trial correction is what we need, and we would make good our track to the station. In our situation, the ADF is moving to the left, so we are again drifting to the right. The 10-degree correction is not enough. A 20-degree correction took us back the first time. Let's use it again. As we reach the track this time, If we take out only 5 degrees, well, that leaves a 15 degree correction. If necessary, further adjustments in heading are made. Suppose if after trying our first 10 degree correction, the needle moved to the right. In this case, we would have known a 10 degree correction was too much. To correct this, we turn to the inbound heading of our track 40 degrees and let the wind drift us back to the track. At this point, we would turn to a heading of 35 degrees to establish a new trial correction of 5 degrees left. Tracking is relatively simple if all procedures are followed. In almost all cases, it is essential that we follow a specific track. Here again is our flight. The 15 degree left correction is making good our track. Let's see how the needle reacts as we approach and pass over the station. The ADF indicator begins to oscillate, and as we pass the station, the needle swings around 180 degrees. We'll now return to the field. This time we will intercept the outbound track of 125 degrees. Again, parallel. We check the angle off. In this case, 20 degrees. Then double the angle to intercept. Here we will intercept our track at a 40 degree angle. We will be on track when the ADF needle is 40 degrees right of the tail, or a reading of 140 degrees. 
With our heading now 125 degrees, the ADF needle at 180 degrees, we are on the 125 degree outbound track. For outbound tracking, we use the same basic procedures as we do when tracking inbound. Only as we drift off track going outbound, the needle will be deflected from the 180 degree or tail position. Here, 185 degrees. As we turn left 20 degrees to return to the track, notice that the ADF needle moves further away from the tail to 205 degrees. As we approach the track, however, the needle will move back toward the tail. When the needle is 20 degrees left of the tail, at 200 degrees, we will be on track. At this point, we turn back 10 degrees. This gives us our first trial correction. We continue tracking as before. Okay, now we'll tune the Cairns non-directional beacon and work our way back to Cairns Field for a practice approach. The student checks the chart for the proper frequency. Sets the function switch to antenna position, selects the proper frequency band, and tunes to 410 kilocycles. He listens for identifiers. He switches to compass position and tunes for maximum deflection. He now checks the indicator and we continue toward the station. The student seems to know the tuning procedure. Now he will check the approach chart for Cairns as the instructor gets permission from Cairns Tower to make a practice approach. Cairns Tower has given permission to work the facility. Notice that the approach course is the 241 degree outbound track. The procedure turn is to the north, and the published procedure turn altitude is 1,400 feet. The low cone minimum altitude is 900 feet. For the time from station to field, we check the scale at bottom for our airspeed. and check the back of the chart for approach minimum. We arrive over the station on an inbound track of 125 degrees. To enter the left-hand holding pattern from this direction, we turn left to the outbound heading of 241 degrees. When the ADF needle passes the wingtip position, Check the time for the outbound leg of the holding pattern. We continue outbound the required time. Turn to intercept the inbound track and continue holding. Okay, we are cleared for the approach. We descend to the published procedure turn altitude 1,400 feet as we go outbound. Let the 180-degree inbound turn serve as the procedure turn. As we go inbound, we descend to the low station altitude of 900 feet. Passing the station, we note the time and descend to the final approach altitude. In an actual approach, if the field was in sight, we would complete the landing. If the field was not in sight at this time, we would follow the missed approach procedure described on the chart. That can be a very welcome sight when making an actual instrument approach. It looks pretty good on a check ride also. ADF is not difficult to use if you understand the basic principles of operation. Remember, 
When looking at the ATF indicator, it is best if we visualize this as a scale surrounding the aircraft. The needle will always point to the station being received. And the indicator shows the direction to the station relative to the aircraft. To determine the direction to a station, we must use both the ADF and the heading indicator as we saw earlier in this situation. Remember, too, the procedure when intercepting a specific track. You will have reached the track when the needle is deflected an angle off the nose or tail equal to your interception angle. This student feels better about ADF. When you've used the automatic direction finder in flight, you'll know that it is a valuable aid to navigation. <laughs>